So, hi everyone, good morning to all of you. Thank you for being at TC. Uh, in this talk, we're going to talk about a deployment with Tableau Mobile. Uh, I've been in numerous customer meetings uh, with customers such as yourself, and we've heard some unique challenges that you face when you deploy Tableau Mobile, especially from your IT admin teams. Uh, we, you shared all of that information with us, and we've taken all of that information, and we're here to show you how easy it can be to deploy Tableau Mobile and get that successful uh, and integrated within the organization. So, hi, my name is Rahul Motwani. I am one of the product managers on the Tableau Mobile team that deals with enterprise deployments. Over here you're seeing a picture of my family and my kids, and they're the reason why I still appear to be fit even though I have not gone to the gym in the last seven years. Uh, I've been at Tableau for a little over four years, and this is my fifth Tableau conference. I'm joined uh, by my teammate, Sham. Hi, uh, my name is Sham. I'm an engineer on the Tableau mobile team. I've been with Tableau for about four years now. This is also my fifth conference. And in this picture, you can see me hiking in one of the lake trails in Washington. If you're interested in hiking in Washington, uh, let's chat afterwards. So we're just two of the many members of the Tableau Mobile team. Uh, we have representation from the development team, the product management team, the quality assurance team, and of course the user experience, the tech support, and the, uh, and the user content team. You know, we all come together to build this wonderful product for all of you. So while we are just two of us representing here, you know, it does take a village to release this product. So that's all about us, but we also want to know who all of you are. So, a uh, quick survey. Who are the Tableau server admins over here from your team? Oh, we have a fair share. So, we're going to talk to you about some of the authentication mechanisms that we support with Tableau Mobile, and we're hoping that this will help you connect to the Tableau server really seamlessly. Anyone from the IT admin or the IT security champions? Well, thank you for joining us as well. We're going to share some deployment best practices and strategies with you so you can effectively roll this mobile deployment out really quickly. And last but by no means the least, can I see some of my Tableau champions in the room? Thank you to you all. I mean, you're the reason why Tableau is so successful within your organization. And even though you may not be directly able to use this information that we give you, we're really hoping that you can take this back to your admins and your IT teams uh, in order to successfully roll out mobile within your organization. So let's get started. Here's a quick agenda. Uh, we'll walk you through a quick introduction of the Tableau mobile app. Next, Sham will come and talk to you about how you can sign in to Tableau Server. So this is around the connect, the trust, and the authenticate components. I'll come back later on in the, in the slides and talk to you about some of the effective mobile deployment strategies. And uh, time permitting, uh, we should be able to go through a bonus section that we've prepared for you. I'm going to request that if you have any questions, if you could table those and share those with us at the end of the session. And even if we don't have time, uh, Sham and me will hang around here for a little bit more to answer any more questions that you have. So let's get started. Uh, at Tableau, you probably are aware that our mission is to help people see and understand data. On the mobile team, we want to take this mission just one step ahead and we believe that Tableau Mobile provides you with a secure and fast way to access, understand, as well as act on your data. So let's tease apart some of these components. The first one is around security. We all know that you know, mobile devices have corporate sensitive data on them and it becomes even more so problematic when you lose those devices with that data. So we're here to talk to some of the IT admins and, the, uh, you know, and all of you to ensure that security is still top of mind for us and we've built some of these things right into the app. The next one is we do realize that you're dealing with a form factor that is much smaller than your desktop and your laptop. So you know, having effective layouts for your dashboards on the mobile phone is key. And we have designed the mobile app with that in mind. And last, again, but by no means least, is we know that you want to take those insights from your data and you want to act on them in near real time. 
and, and that is important to you. And you saw a quick preview of that in the keynote just recently where we introduced metrics, which is the headlines for your data. So earlier this year, we, re we released a brand new version of the Tableau mobile app that was architected and re-architected from the ground up. Uh, and we, I want to highlight some of the quick features that we think, uh, you know, we built in with feedback that we got from customers such as yourself. The first one was around an improved browsing and navigation experience. So if you've used the mobile app and you've used server, you see that the navigation experience that you have on the server is now avail available to you in the mobile app as well. So it makes finding your content much more easy. Plus, the search experience is almost near real time, so as you type in con your search string, you will get your results back. The second is around uh, offline viewing. We know that you want to get access to your data and your insights whenever you are and wherever you are. So with that, we have built in the capability to view your data even when you're offline. The third one is around deep linking which is the ability for you to link between one dashboard and the other one that happens to be on your server. In the previous app, uh, when you clicked on such a link, it would take you out from the mobile app experience into the mobile browser and you would have to sign in again. Well, not anymore. With the new mobile app now, when you click on such a deep link, you get linked to and can get to your dashboard within the mobile app experience. So it takes away that frustration that you had. And last again, but by no means least, is the KPIs or the metrics for your data, right? They're front and center, as you saw in the demo earlier in the keynote. These are fresh, they're always, uh, you know, they're always up to date, and it provides you with a quick way to get to the highlights from your dashboards really easily. And of course, all this is available across both the phone and the tablet layout for you. And in, on both the iOS as well as the Android platform, we've built full feature parity across both of those. So next, I'm going to call upon Sham, and he's going to take it over and talk to you about how you can connect from Tableau Mobile to Tableau Server or online. Take it away, Sham. Thanks, Rahul. All right, so how is Tableau Mobile different from Tableau Desktop or you know, connecting to Tableau Server from a browser, which you probably are more familiar with? There are a few challenges that we face when we build the mobile app uh, so to connect to Tableau Server. Firstly, the, there are two different platforms. There's iOS and Android. They have numerous restrictions imposed when apps are published, so we'll have to work around that. We'll have to work in, uh, be in compliance with them. Uh, these apps can be downloaded from app stores. Uh, iOS has their own app store. Google has the Play Store. And there are different security challenges when it comes to the mobile app. Uh, your mobile device is personal. You carry it with you all the time. It is also so much more easier to lose it compared to a laptop. So there's corporate data on it, and you could lose it. So what does it mean in terms of security? And di different organizations have different security requirements. And so when we build the mobile app, we need to make it generic enough so that it works for everyone. And a bring your own device is more common these days. We hear from our customers that their users like to use their personal phones for both work and uh, personal data. So how do you manage the data that's, uh, how do you manage data on a phone that has both personal and work related information? We'll talk about this in some of the upcoming slides. Uh, before we get into the uh, details of how we connect to Tableau, uh, we, we need to understand that there are different uh, security requirements and how we can get through the different hoops so that we can get the mobile app to talk to Tableau server. So I'm going to jump directly into the details here. So the three steps that we need to go through before we can get the mobile app to talk to Tableau server. So when I say talk to Tableau server, I mean they exchange data and then finally you can get access to all the data on the phone. The first step is connect. And when I say connect, it simply means being able to talk to Tableau server. There are different ways of doing this. The simplest way is to have the mobile device connected to the same network as the Tableau server. This could be your corporate network, so they're sharing the same network and the connection is straightforward. So the mobile app can talk to Tableau server and then you can access all the data you need. The next type is to use a reverse proxy. This is actually more common with a lot of our customers. In reverse proxy, what happens is there's an intermediary server that handles all communications between the mobile app 
and the Tableau server. So any data that's exchanged goes through this reverse proxy. There are a few advantages of using a reverse proxy. First, uh, there's not much setup needed on the mobile side, so you could essentially use the reverse proxy to connect to Tableau Server even from your home PC. So a lot of our customers prefer this. A more recent trend that we've seen is uh, using virtual private networks or VPN. Think of this as a tunnel in the firewall in your uh, corporate network. So any data that's uh, transmitted between the mobile app and the server goes through this tunnel. There are different variations of the tunnel. You could have a VPN that's configured for all the apps on the mobile device, or there could be a per app VPN. So you could configure it such that just the Tableau mobile app can use the VPN and other apps don't go through the VPN. And th the other option that some of our customers use is they host Tableau in the cloud. Uh, in this case, it's fairly straightforward. The mobile device and the Tableau server are both in the public internet, so connecting to Tableau server is pretty straightforward. If you've connected to Tableau online, this is one way uh, of doing it. Tableau online is also hosted in the cloud. But the key thing to remember is work with your IT and security team to figure out what confirms to your uh, organization's governance needs and don't gamble with your company's data. So we've seen how we can connect to Tableau Server, the different types of connections, and I guess we can check that box off. The next thing is trust, uh, but it's not exactly a different step. The trust and connect sort of happens in conjunction with each other. But by trust, what I mean is how do you know that the server that you're connecting to is the real Tableau server? Because clearly you do not want to type in credentials in a server that could be uh, some middleman trying to grab the credentials from you. But is trust really a philosophical argument? Uh, could be, but if the argument is between whether to use a secure protocol or an insecure protocol, I would say just go with the secure protocol. And to sort of assert my claim here, I'm going to call upon a quote from one of America's great philosophers. I'll give you a moment to ponder over it. When you die, if you get a choice, between going to regular heaven or pie heaven, choose the pie heaven. It might be a trick, but if it's not, mm, boy. And this is a quote from Jack Handy, one of uh, Saturday Night Live's uh, writers. Quick question, uh, poll in the audience. How many of you like pie? How many of you like cream pie? Okay, and fruit pie? Are there any other kind of pies? Sham, I actually had a question for you. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. What if you were going to heaven and you had to choose between the line for the chocolate cream pie or the fruit pie? Which one would you choose? Hmm. Well, I would have said fruit pie, but I I like cream pie a lot more these days. Ah, yeah. okay. So there, we're, we differ a little bit over there. I would go for the fruit pies. You'd go, okay. Yeah. Well, not the real pie, I guess, but it'll work. So here's how I, I would rephrase this pearl of wisdom in terms of data security. When you choose a data protocol, uh, if you have a choice between a secure protocol and insecure protocol, choose the secure protocol. It won't be a trick, so um boy. So, uh, so we talked about trust and how it's important to trust or how, how it's important to know if we can trust the Tableau server. So the, how do we do this in the mobile app? So when we configure Tableau Server, there are a few certificates that are set up. There could be SSL or TLS certificates. And when the Tableau mobile app connects to a server that has these certificates installed, it's able to either trust them or not trust them, depending on the validity of these certificates. There are a few requirements, though. So for instance, I have a server here that uh, could be signed by a or B. In this case, A or B is a certificate authority, and these are valid uh, certificate authorities. So when the mobile app connects to a server signed by one of these certificates and it can recognize them, it's going to say, okay, I trust the server and let's connect. Uh, the, the key thing to remember here is these certificate routes have to be installed on the mobile device. It, generally, the mobile devices come installed with these certificates. There's not generally a problem with the more modern devices. So we can connect to Tableau and then we are in Pi Heaven. 
Another option and uh, quite common among our customers is uh, they prefer to use self-signed certificates. So this is different from using a certificate authority. In this case, the company would themselves sign the certificate. The important thing here is the self-signed certificates have to be installed on the device. They don't come with the device when you purchase it. So we'll have to find a way to get it set up. Mobile device management is one way to get it set up. Uh, more about this in the upcoming slides. So once, we, once the mobile app recognizes the certificate and it says, okay, I have this self-signed certificate and I recognize the server and then it's going to connect. So key things to remember is always use HTTPS. Uh, try to configure Tableau with TLS 1.2. That's the latest and recommended from our Tableau administrators. Use a certificate signed authority, uh, sorry, use a certificate signed by an authority or you could also use self-signed certificates. But whatever you do, make sure you have the chains configured. The certificate chain adds an additional layer of security in the protocol which helps the mobile app talk to Tableau server. So I guess we can check that box off. So the next step is authentication. So we know how to connect to Tableau server, whether we are inside the corporate network or outside. And we've also seen how we can trust the server that we are connecting to. The third step is how does Tableau know this is the right user and should, should they be able to access data? So the authentication is the step where that comes in. So we need to authenticate because we want a workgroup session ID from uh, Tableau. Uh, don't worry too much about it. Just think of workgroup session ID as a unique key which you can use to access data on Tableau server. So everybody would have a different workgroup session ID and my workgroup session ID will have limited access. Maybe I can only access dashboards that are related to development and Rahul might have a different workgroup session ID which has a wider access. There are different authentication types that are supported in the mobile app. The first one is local auth. This is the simplest type where you just type in a username and a password and then you connect to Tableau server. The second is SAML. Uh, it also includes site SAML where you can either have SAML configured for all of Tableau or you could have it configured for just one or two sites or more in Tableau server. We also support Kerberos, which is used by a lot of our customers. Kerberos is only available on iOS. This is due to platform limitations. And uh, we've also introduced NTLM, which is available for both iOS and Android. Kerberos and NTLM are uh, based off of SSPI, which is a set of APIs which Microsoft has for connecting and authentication. So the first step uh, in authentication is connect trust. So when we connect and we talk to Tableau server, the mobile app and the Tableau server exchange some information. The mobile app says hello and then the Tableau server responds back with some information in an XML format. This has a lot of information in the XML format, but the, key, the one thing that we are concerned about is the authentication type. So in this case, uh, the authentication type is a user password. So the mobile app recognizes the Tableau server requires a user password and behaves accordingly. So what happens in local authentication? Uh, here's a workflow, workflow that I have. Uh, when you connect to Tableau server that supports local auth, the user is presented with a prompt where they can type in the username and the password. The, the password is encrypted using the public key that is provided by the Tableau server. The encrypted credentials are then sent back. Tableau server would then decrypt this. If the credentials are valid, it would issue the workgroup session ID. But that's what we need to access data on Tableau. There's a slight variation of this, which is more common among the customers, uh, is using an Active Directory. It could be any other directory service. So in this case, the directory service would do the authenticate, uh, validate the credentials rather than Tableau doing it. All right. Before we jump into SAML, for some non-redeemable bonus points, can someone tell me what SAML stands for? Uh, you may have to speak on the top of your voice because of the headset, so maybe we can take this off for a moment and then uh, see. Can everybody take a guess? Okay, we have somebody there. Security assertion markup language. Perfect, that's security assertion markup language, absolutely. So the 
So SAML is a way of splitting the identity provider, splitting the, uh, you know, the validation of the credentials from the service provider. In the previous case, it was either the Tableau server that validated the credentials. In this case, we could have a third party validate the credentials. There are some advantages to this. So you could have single sign-on in your organization. So you could use the same identity provider for Tableau and other applications that you might use in your company. So in the case of Tableau, the client is the Tableau mobile app. Tableau server is the service provider and the identity provider can be any third party IDP. I have a few examples of IDPs here. On the left is Ping and uh, over to on the right is Okta. And uh, if you've connected to Tableau online, that is also a SAML experience. These are not just the only limited IDPs, but you could configure with virtually any IDP. Also, the key, uh, I'd like to draw your attention to the screenshots again. Uh, if you'd notice, this is a web page provided by the IDP, so the user would type in credentials directly into the web page. This is an embedded web view within the mobile app, so the user is not typing credentials in the mobile app. So what happens in a SAML workflow? Uh, there's a web page, we, it's an embedded web page where the IDP presents a prompt for the username and password uh, when we connect to Tableau Server. And the, the, everything that happens inside the box is in the web view. Uh, so the user would type in credentials directly in the web page and if the credentials check out, the IDP would redirect back with an assertion. So the assertion is what we look for in the mobile app. And when we get this from the IDP, we are able to log into Tableau and get the workgroup session ID. The next type of authentication uh, that we support is Kerberos. Uh, Kerberos is a really old type of authentication. It's been around for a very long time, but it's still a really good one. And a lot of our customers use this. Uh, it also supports single sign-on like SAML. And uh, it has longer lived sessions with what's known as ticket granting tickets. Uh, so you could have users be signed into the mobile app and not experience disconnectivity from the sessions. There are a few requirements though to have Kerberos set up. First is you need to have an Active Directory set up in your organization and uh, you need certain profiles installed on the mobile device. So these profiles have two key pieces of information. One is a user uh, principal name which uh, gives us details about who the user is and who's connecting to Tableau Server. And the other is about Realm, which is nothing but details about the Active Directory domain, depending on what domain you're connected to in the organization. So uh, Kerberos workflow is a lot more complex, but don't worry, the, there are a lot of steps that happen before connecting or you know before you repeatedly connect to Tableau Server. So there are many one-time, there's a one-time step that happens. So the first is a requesting a ticket granting ticket. So we request this from the ticket service, uh, ticket provider, and then we get back the ticket for the user. And the, another option is if you don't do this, you could also pre-install user certificates, which can be used to connect to Tableau. So once we have this, we request for a ticket for Tableau, and th that's what we use to connect to Tableau Server. So if the ticket is valid, we can log in with credentials and get access to the workgroup session ID and then see all the data we need. So the key, uh, there are a few advantages of using Kerberos. Uh, the ticket is used to decode the credentials, so there's no typing in credentials. So the experience would be where a user, name, a user types in the server name and they connect and the ticket is used to decode the credentials so they'd never see a password prompt. The other type of authentication we support is NTLM. Uh, think of this as a four-way handshake, which is a challenge authentication. The mobile app talks to uh, the Tableau server, and then there's a set of challenges that are presented, and each time the mobile app responds back. And when this goes through, uh, the Tableau mobile app is able to connect to Tableau server. So if you ask us, we would say SAML is the preferred method to connect to Tableau Server, a preferred authentication type. Uh, we've seen that it works for a lot of customers, it is very secure, and it's easy to configure. And if you have a reverse proxy set up in your organization, make sure to have a single IDP which 
makes things a lot easier in terms of setting up. So there it is, we are signed in, whether it's on the mobile app or a tablet, and wherever you are, you should have, you should be able to connect to Tableau using these details. So I guess we can check that box off. And so we talked about how we can connect to Tableau, and but it sort of brings about a conundrum between users and IT. Uh, as a user, I don't like typing in credentials, but if I were an IT administrator, I would expect my users to renew their sessions often. And we have some features that sort of balance the needs of the users and the expectations from the IT administrators. The first is we use OAuth tokens in the mobile app. So there are two types of tokens we use. One is a session access token and the other is a ref refresh token. Uh, these tokens are issued to the mobile app when we first connect to it. And the refresh, uh, these tokens expire after 365 days of not using it. Of course, this is the default, you can, it can be configured. Uh, the refresh token is renewed every time we access Tableau server from the mobile app. And if you haven't opened the mobile app in 14 days, the refresh token would expire. And you may have to type in credentials. But it actually depends. It type, if you, depends on the type of authentication supported by the Tableau server, if you have to type in credentials or not. So if you use a user password and the refresh token has expired, you will have to type in credentials. For SAML, you have to type in credentials. Uh, for Kerberos, you only need to type in credentials if the TGT renewal is needed. For reverse proxy, the key thing to remember is it may be a, it may have a different timeout from the rever re refresh token, so you may have to type in credentials for the reverse proxy, even if the refresh token is still valid. Of course, the validity of the tokens can be configured. If you're a Tableau administrator, this can be done from the TSM settings. Another feature that we have that enables control over the sessions is uh, connected clients. This has been around in Tableau for a while. Uh, this is a server-side setting. This can be accessed by the user and by an administrator. So what this does is it, it shows a list of clients that I'm connected from. So in this screenshot, uh, towards the lower side, you can see I'm connected from a phone and a MacBook. So in case I lose my phone, I can log into Tableau from a browser and delete the token that has been issued to the mobile device. So in that case, the session would expire and I can be assured that the data is, well, there's no data on the mobile app. And nobody could access it if I've lost the phone. We also introduced a new feature. Uh, it's called biometric app lock. If you have Tableau Server 19.4, this can be enabled from the server side. Or if you have an older version of Tableau, this can also be done enabled using mobile device management. Uh, Rahul will be telling how this can be done in the upcoming slides. As a user, you could also turn it on from uh, the phone. You can go to the settings of the app and turn it on. I have a little demo to show you how this works. So I'm going to try launching the mobile app and it's going to prompt me for a biometric authentication. In this case, I'm using an iPhone, so it prompts me for a face ID. Once I've got through, gotten through that, I have access to all the data that I need. Another feature that we have as part of this is app screen. So when you background the app, we've added an app screen that prevents anybody from peeking and having a look at what data or what dashboards you have. So you could. Uh, so what happens if biometrics doesn't work? The sensors could be smudged, or uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work. I'm wearing sunglasses and it doesn't pick up the face ID. So we have a fallback option. So in this case, I'm going to try, and it's going to fail. And then I have, to, I should see a fallback option for typing in a passcode. It's going to try once more, and there it is. So if, if biometrics doesn't work, there's a fallback option of using the passcode to log into the app. All right, so we're gonna switch gears and Rahul is gonna talk about how to deploy the mobile app. Over to you, Rahul. Thanks, Sham. So just a quick recap. Sham just went through, I know it seemed like a very technical talk, but I think the gist of it for the, all of you is that we do support all of these authentication mechanisms and, and ways to secure uh, and you know connect to the Tableau server. It may seem a little complex to you looking at those flow diagrams, but trust me, we just support the standard protocols. So if you are adopting one of those protocols, 
it should be fairly simple for you to uh, set up your mobile app as well as connect to your Tableau server. The next section I'm going to talk to you about is, you know, you've now established that secure communication between the mobile app and server. Now you actually need to get it deployed within your organization. So before we go into that section, um, I think it's important for us to, you know, kind of level set uh, and get a common, get some common terminology out of the way. So just wanted to get a quick show of hands. How many of you have seen or heard one of these terms floating around? EMM, MDMs, MAM. Okay, I see a few hands. So I think it makes sense for us to just cover the basics. So EMM is what we call Enterprise Mobility Management. These are uh, device and platform agnostic software services that you get that help you manage, configure, and secure all of the devices within your organization, both corporate owned as well as bring your own device. And you know you can do things like decide which apps need to be deployed. You know who gets access to those apps. You know whether they have certain permissions set on them. Can they access the internet and things like that? So all of that is what typically enterprises use to manage the deployment of any uh, you know any software onto these mobile phones and tablets. The next under that is what we refer to as MDM or mobile device management. So it's the same setup and configuration and management and security but it's at the device level. So this is very common in enterprises where they issue you corporate owned devices like iPhones and iPads or even Android phones. The key over here is it's the entire device is managed by the IT or the admin team. The next in this is what we refer to as mobile application management. It's the same concept of managing, but it's just applying to the application in this case and not the entire device. So, you know, in this case, you would, the IT admin would just be managing the Tableau application on your phone and not the entire phone. And last is, you know, it's bring your own device. This is when you and me, you know, don't have corporate phones. We bring in our own phones, but we still want to get Tableau on our phones and we still want to get access to our servers and get those data insights. And as you can see, MDM supports both corporate owned and BYOD. MAM also supports both but it's primarily used for the bring your own device scenario because that's when you know people like you and me don't want to give all of our data from our phones to our IT admins. So now that we've established some of that common terminology, I'm going to start using that terminology in the deck, so you know, be prepared for that. So I'm going to share a couple of, we have three strategies for deploying Tableau Mobile successfully within the enterprise. The first one is around unmanaged devices. So this is typically the case when your department or your organization does not use one of these enterprise mobility management or EMM solutions. This is when you are just going to go and install Tableau Mobile from either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store directly. You know, you don't have to go through your IT admin to get that. And in this case, you know, the secure connection or the trust is going to be established using either a VPN, that's a virtual private network, or you can use a reverse proxy, both of which Sham covered in the previous slide decks. So that's how you install, and that's how you establish that secure communication between Tableau Mobile and Tableau Server or online. So that's unmanaged, that's the first one. The second one is when you're using one of these enterprise mobility management solutions, but you're doing what we call mobile device management. So in this case, like I said, you know, the entire device is managed. So everything from securing, configuring, distribution and control is done at the device level. So let's go step by step through what each of these phases cover. And I think that'll give you a better understanding of the process. So in the first phase is secure. So this is going back to Sham's uh, bucket of you know where he says we need to establish that secure connection and the trust. This is where you would do some of that. So this is where you would configure the virtual private network so all of your traffic can go through that. And you can set up the virtual private network to be either at the device level or you can just configure Tableau to go through that virtual private network. The second step is the configuration. So this is to do more with the trust component that we saw previously. This is where you would install like your SSL and your TLS certificates or your Kerberos certificates. 
and you would also be able to configure your apps and your policies. So you may have some customizations that you want to support within the Tableau mobile deployment. You know, you may have a separate site for your sales team, a separate site for your marketing team or your operations team, and you may want to pre-configure some settings or some server names based on that. So this is the step where you would do that. The third is around the distribution. So this is basically where you will push the, the actual apps onto the devices within the organization. And things that you could typically do in this case, or we've seen when we're talking to customers, is they will set up two different groups. One would be sort of your UAT or your test group, and one would be like your production group where you know you have all of your employees in it. And what they would do is the IT admins in your teams would first roll out the most recent version of the Tableau mobile app to your UAT or test group and you know just make sure it's connecting fine there are no other issues there are no other regressions or defects in that and once they have confidence that you know it connects fine and it's it's kind of checked off all of the check boxes that IT is concerned about with security that's when they would roll out the most recent version to that complete production environment so the MDM enables you to con you know configure these separate groups and control the rollout of the mobile app to these groups also uh, yeah, so version control and who gets it. So this is what we call entitling the app. So they could either entitle it to some of you within the organization if you happen to be in a special group. And if you're not in that special group, then you don't get the mobile app. The last is around control. So this has to do with you know having secure corporate data onto your device. Uh, mobile device management platforms give you the ability to you know require an additional unlock passcode when you access your phone or they may want to restrict the camera or they may want to restrict you know you taking screenshots of dashboards they would usually do that from the MDM system because these are OS controlled uh, settings and permissions also you can specify which apps can actually access the internet or not and in the case that you know phones get lost pretty frequently, they also have the ability to remotely wipe the data from the phone using the MDM system. So at Tableau, we support uh, all of these six mobile device management platforms. These are the top six that are in the 2019 Gartner report for the top EMM solutions. Uh, just one note, if you have to ha happen to have an MDM platform that's not on this list, uh, if they happen to be a part of the app config community, we still support them, but we've not tested them out explicitly within Tableau. So that was the second deployment strategy. The third one is mobile application management. Now just again, a recap, it's doing the same management configuration and secure, but you're now doing it at the application level instead of at the device level. And this is more prevalent in situations where you know employees bring in their own devices uh, to the phone uh, to, to their organization to connect to Tableau Server. So for the supported MAMs, uh, these are what we call SDK integrated apps, and we currently have support for BlackBerry and AirWatch on the iOS platform. But we are working very closely with a lot of these vendors to create updated versions of these apps for the newly released Tableau mobile app and we're going to support all of the other six uh, MDMs that you saw on the previous, previous slide. So just before we move ahead to the next section, I want to do a quick recap of the two different technologies. One was mobile device management and one was mobile application management. The key differences are from where you install the app and how you establish that secure communication. So for the MDMs, you, this is where your admin would you know, get the app from the App Store, configure it using some settings, and then make it available within your organization's App Store. The secure communication over here is established on a per app VPN level, so only the Tableau mobile app can be configured to go through your VPN if that's what you choose. In the MAM, or mobile application management, you would just install these, you know, these special apps that Tableau creates and uploads to the App Store and the Google Store. You can just go download them from there. And in this case, the secure connectivity is established either using the secure tunnel that we've created when we integrate our app with these SDKs, or you can also set up a per app VPN. It totally depends on which MDM or MAM app that you're installing. And lastly, uh, we know how customizations are important within the enterprise. So 
we do allow customizations with the mobile app and we use the when we use the technology uh, which is called app config it's an industry standard and you can go read more about it at appconfig.org what this basically is is uh, we have a list of key value pairs that we support within the app and this is usually bundled either into the app or we distribute these separately via an xml file when the Tableau mobile app launches, it looks for this XML file. And if it does find that XML file and those key value pairs, then we apply those customizations to the mobile app for you. It's as simple as that. Where would you use some things like this? Is, you know, when you want to reduce the frictions for users signing in, you know, so you may want to customize the list of servers that your users can connect to so that they don't, you know, mistype the server URL, or sometimes they don't remember which servers they want to connect to. This is where you would, you know, pre-configure, pre-configure those server settings and, and, and push those apps down to your, to your employees. Also, uh, you know, you could then tailor experiences for different groups within your organization. So if you have a marketing team that has a separate bank of servers from your sales team, you know, you could customize those server lists based on people within these various groups. I just want to point out one cautionary note on this. If you happen to be using the Android platform, in order for app config to work, you would need the Android enterprise set up within your organization. I'm just going to leave this up for a couple of seconds for you to absorb. You don't have to take a screenshot of this. We do have uh, a nifty printout that kind of points to that help article that we have on the slide over here. But I just want to show you some of the customizations that we have. The first one is where you can set up a custom list of servers. The second one is where you can give friendly names to these servers so it's more palatable for people within the organization. You know, you can remove the Tableau online button from the sign-in screen of the mobile app. And then lastly, you can disable the data download functionality within the mobile app. And if you also want to configure the newly released application lock using biometrics feature, that is also possible using these customizations. So I'm just going to show you a couple of screenshots of what the sign-in experience looks like on the mobile sign-in screen when we apply some of these customizations. So what you're seeing over here is the standard mobile screen when you try to sign in. Now, the first one I'm going to apply is I'm going to set these service hosts and I'm going to set that list to, you know, Tableau and sales example. And as you, as you can see on the left over there, those are the custom list of servers that appear. Next, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm actually going to give friendly names to these servers because those names may not resonate with my users. So I'll just give it friendly names like main and sales. And also I'm going to re retitle that header for those bank of servers to be, you know, our custom servers. So you can quickly see how I've customized that sign-in experience for my users now. And lastly, I'm going to take it a step ahead and just clean up this whole thing. So I'm going to remove the Tableau online button and I'm going to hide the server name field so I don't, you know, they don't have to worry about typing it in or if I'm concerned as an admin that they're, that they're actually going to type in some other servers and go across the internet and I want to block that, I can just remove that field and just make the simplified sign-in experience for them. So you saw with, the, you know, with a quick few setting changes, I was able to customize that sign-in experience for my users. So we look like we have time, so this is the much promised bonus section now that we're going to go into. So we know that you know, IT admins are always cringing when users within the organization are asking them for you know, Tableau Mobile to be deployed so they can get access to Tableau Server. But for all my IT admin folks, you know, be rest assured that we take security really, really seriously over here at Tableau. So some of the things that we do to ensure that your data is secure on your device is we, I talked to you about the ability where we built into the phone where you can view all your data and visualization offline. In order to support that, we do bring in some cache data and store that on your phone. But we have built in server settings and local settings onto the phone for you as an IT admin to turn that feature off. So you can decide if you want to give your users that capability to view offline data. Also, all of this cache data is deleted when you do sign out for the app. Encryption is a big thing. We do take that seriously and all of the data is encrypted on the device. We use the OS level encryption when you're using the unmanaged or the MDM approach for deployment. And if you do happen to use the MAM approach, then the enterprise mobility management suite should provide you that level of encryption for your data. And lastly, Always and always, we remove all of the data when you sign out or you uninstall of the app, so we ensure that there's no data left on the phone. 
I'm showing you a screenshot of the Tableau server screen, uh, which shows you the site settings for where you can enable or disable offline favorites, as well as where you can enable the newly released application lock feature, which just went out in 19.4. Uh, again, available for both server and online. And lastly, we know you still run into issues when you, you know, use the Tableau mobile app. Uh, and we do get a lot of customer support cases from you know, customers such as yourself. But we want to make it easy for our team to debug and diagnose those issues. So we do have the ability for you to send us the application logs, if you choose to do so, from within the device itself. And I'm showing you, showing you some screenshots under our help and support screen, where when you hit the send app logs button, this is some of the data that comes across to us. Again, there is no personally identifiable information in this. All the information that is there is helps us diagnose and debug those issues for you. So we do have some great resources for you. Uh, we do have a, a, a readout or a, you know, a takeaway for you that you can come and grab from us at the end of the session. If we do run out of some of these, uh, we do have them at the showcase uh, at one of the mobile kiosks. You can come and grab us and even talk to us more about this. And then just a quick show of hands, how many of you are also, I mean, we, we do provide a lot of native experiences within the mobile app, but we do know that you know, some of you want to take this a step further and want to create some more customizations that we may not support natively. So in order to enable that, we do have an open source uh, tool called the Mobile App Bootstrap. It is available in Objective-C as well as React Native. And this lets you do some of the advanced customizations that you want. Uh, it is basically uh, letting you take embedded views and load them onto a web page. So uh, if you're interested in uh, some advanced uh, you know, customizations that we support, I would recommend you go and attend this in-depth talk, and I'll have that information up in the related slide sections coming up. Uh, but if you, do, if you are doing some customizations, uh, you know, come talk to one of us after. I'm really curious as to what those customizations are, because we would love to start supporting those natively within the Tableau mobile app if it's applicable across a lot of our large customer bases. Always, we look for feedback and ideas, and we've come up with a new dedicated community forum for Tableau Mobile. So we do monitor this on a very frequent basis, so I highly recommend as you have feedback and ideas, please go up here and post them so we can, we can start looking at some of that. And here are some related sessions around mobile that you can go and listen to after our talk. The first one is around the newly released metrics feature that you saw in the Vision Keynote. Uh, that is tomorrow. The mobile app bootstrap one is the one I was referring to if you're interested in some customizations. And please note, these timings and the locations may change, so the Tableau conference app is the most up-to-date when it comes to all of this information. The last is talking about some of the use cases and how to successfully ad get Tableau mobile adopted across your organization. This will talk more around how to create those effective layouts and dashboards. And lastly, we have a meetup on mobile and metrics uh, towards the end of the conference on Friday. So do swing by if you have any more questions. Uh, with that, we're going to open it up to Q&A. But before we do that, uh, I just want you to take a moment and pull out your phones, because I know all of you have them. And please, please, please fill out these surveys for us. We do look at all of this feedback. And this is what the conference team does take into account when scheduling sessions for future conferences. So if you did like our session, or if you have feedback on what else we could incorporate in these sessions, please do let us know. We do take that feedback seriously. And with that, thank you all for listening to us. Questions? Yeah. We do have some time for questions, so. Are you going to allow uh, subscriptions to see if we can open the app automatically? When you click on a subscription now, you yeah. mention a subscription, it don't post to the web page. Yep. And then it does give you that banner up top. Yep. Is it yeah. going to be, is it going to eventually allow when you're in an email and you click it? that'll open up the app right to that app. We are, we are working on that problem to see if we can deep link directly from the subscription into the mobile app itself. Yeah. Uh, yes. If you deploy a new version on the uh, app, uh, so how do you push the new app yeah. across the board? So, 
I'm going to repeat the question for people that are listening in. Uh, the question was around uh, when we do roll out new versions of the mobile app, how does that get rolled out across the yeah. organization? Yeah. Uh, it depends uh, on what your organization sure. is using for I, managing I, releases. I, I don't. Uh, can you hear? Can you guys hear? Oh, Sham, I think your, your thing is coming up. Um, so it depends if you're using a mobile device management solution, then your admin can control which version of the app you get. But if you uh, happen to be just a user that installed the app from the App Store or the Google Play Store, uh, it will automatically update if you have that setting turned on. If you don't want the automatic updates, then I would recommend you turn that setting off so you can control which version you're on. Yep. Oh, so the question is around how you capture mobile usage. Um, right now we have uh, a workaround. Uh, I know you're probably alluding to like an admin view or something where you can see mobile usage. Uh, we don't have that currently. It's a known ask that is being tracked on our list of things to do. Uh, in the interim, I can, whoever's interested in mobile usage, I can give you my card uh, and you can send me a quick email. There is a workaround where you can, act, the data exists in the Postgres database. You just have to do a couple of joins to get that data across to you and I can send you that workaround. So anyone interested in mobile usage or how you can track that for your organization, just come talk to me afterwards. So the mobile is, is available right now, whatever you describe yep. is available. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, you should. So the mobile, it's, the mobile is free as long as you have the available, the corresponding licenses. So whatever, it's it's basically a glorified viewer for all of your data on server. So if you can view that data on server, you can view it from mobile as well. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you all.